Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome everyone to prayer today. Good morning. Good morning, sisters. God bless you. Thank you for joining time, the time of prayer today. Today we are going to be praying um, about taking territories, taking territories. And if you've been here in the last few weeks that we've been praying together, you will know that we have been we started on a premise, and the premise that we started off on is the fact that we are ambassadors, right? And so as an ambassador, we have certain rights and responsibilities that come with our ambassadorship, right? And one of the things that I found, because um, I, I love to read a lot of uh, books that are set in, set in the, in the olden, in the olden days, right? I love to read a lot of um, books set across different parts of the world, but you know, it, for the ones that, that not just modern books, but very old in old times. You know, just understanding how they lived in that time, what their culture looked like, and all of that. And one of the things that was very, very obvious to me as I started to do a study, a bit of reading on those times, is the fact that the it was such an important thing to be a landowner. You know, to be a landlord. Let me put it that way. Such an important thing to be a landlord. Such an important thing to own land. And landlords were people who were lords. That's as I was. If you, you were a lord because you had land. And that was what was enough for you to have to have to be a lord. Commoners didn't have land. You know, they were just commoners. They were not seen to be part of the gentry because they didn't have land. And so as an ambassador, one of the things that happens is that you get land, right? It's a sign of authority to be to be a landowner. So you get land. You, you are a lord because you have land. And so you, you're given land and then your responsibility is to make sure that the land and the people around you, your tenants, everybody who's using your land, people that are growing crops on your land, giving you money for, for using your land, everybody under your jurisdiction is fine. That's how it is. So you have a territory that God has given to you. For those of us that are living in diaspora, you live in Canada, you live in the U.S., God brought you to this land for a reason, and he has allotted a territory to you. How do I know this? If we look at our own examples in scripture, remember we talked about that last time, that we're, we're examining the lives of people who took a journey like we've like done, who left their country, their own people, and said, I, I want to go to a new country, Right? And we're looking at their lives. And if you read through the book of Genesis that we started off reading last time, Genesis 28, you're going to see again, talking about the blessing that God blessed Jacob with, right? And that is very profound because in reading through the book of Genesis, you will see the things that God said to him, how God blessed him. So it was not enough till God blessed him. But what were the terms of the covenant that God caught with him? What were the terms of the blessing? So that we can lay claim to those things now as God's children, especially as women and mothers who are living in diaspora. The Bible says that in, in Genesis 28, that Isaac called Jacob, blessed him, and told him to go. Right? And when he ran from his father's house because he was hiding from his brother, the Bible says if you read through that scripture and you read from verses 10 to 15, you will see how the Bible says that he got to a certain place. He, he stopped there to pray. Angels were ascending and descending and all of that. And if you look at verse 13, the Bible says, there above, there above it, talking about the ladder, stood the Lord. And he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. I'm going to stop there for a bit and we, we'll start to pray. Then I'll read a few more of those verses and we will also pray. Remember we talked about, about, about the fact that we are landowners. We we, we are we have territory. Um, we have some territory assigned to us when God brought us into a new country. You may not understand what what, what that is because it's not a, a physical location, a, a territory. And say, oh, this territory 
from um, <laughs> if you live in my city, this territory from Somerside to Ellesley. That is the land that I'm giving to you. That's not the way it is. It's a territory in the spirit. God gives you oversight, function, you know, over certain places, over certain things that belong to you. It, the, the, the city you live in, very important. The location you find yourself now, the, the city you're in, the community you live in, there is a territory that God has assigned to you in the spirit and you can take charge over that territory and say no. You can put a stop to allowing enemy invaders to come into your city, to come into your country, to come into your community, to come into your territory and say no, not on my watch. As a landowner, a person who has um, responsibility, a person who owns territory, God has given us two, two things. One, there is a benefit that comes from having land, having the territory. You reap the benefit of it. You get what belongs to you in that, in that territory. At the same time, you have responsibilities. You have obligations over that territory to guard it, to make sure that the people in there are safe. Everybody who is under you is safe. They are protected because they are under your territory. That's a responsibility that is very important. And so when we, want, when we, want, when we start to pray today, I want us to pray without understanding that we, we, are, we own territory. God has given us territories. He has given us oversight function concerning some territories, right? So I want us to begin to pray today, starting with that scripture that we just read. He says, this land that you are standing on, I will give you and your descendants. I will give you and your descendants that land. I want us to begin to declare in the name of Jesus Christ and begin to say, Lord, I lay claim to my territory. The territory that you have given to me as a, as a woman, as a Christian woman, as a Christian mother living in Canada, living in the USA, Father, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that I begin to lay claim to that territory in any way where I've, where I've been negligent, where I did not even realize that I had a territory. And so I've allowed weeds to encroach on my land, where I've allowed all sorts of things to take over my land, where I've not even been uh, conscious and sensitive in the spirit to take charge over my land. Father, I ask for your mercy. And I say, Lord, from this moment, I come before you with an understanding that you have given a territory unto me and I lay claim to my territory. I lay claim to the territory that you have given unto me. I take over that which belongs to me. I put my foot on and I say, this belongs to me and I lay claim to it. I lay claim, I lay claim, I lay claim. I lay claim in the name of Jesus Christ. I lay claim. Father, we declare in the name of Jesus Christ that we lay claim to that which the Lord has given unto us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want you to begin to pray. One of the things that God has given unto you is your marriage. If anybody wants to encroach, on that which belongs to you, in your marriage, in your home, I want you to say no to the enemy and say, Father, I declare that this territory of my marriage, this territory of my marriage is mine, is mine, and I lay hold, I take responsibility, I take control, and I declare that the enemy, uh, the, if any invader has no space in my family, has no space in my marriage. If there is any way where the intruder, where the invader has come into my marriage, I declare from today that I stand in authority in the name of Jesus Christ. And I take that which belongs to me. I lay claim of my territory, the territory of my marriage. In the name of Jesus, I declare that a new country will not take away my marriage. A new country will not let me lose my home. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm sure we've heard about the statistics. It's staggering. The number of marriages that come to an end, that run into trouble when they move to a new country. It is staggering. Is a lot, but we can rise up as mothers in, in, in the spirit. 
prayed as women of prayer and say no to the enemy. I lay claim. I lay hold in the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. I lay hold in the spirit and I say my marriage is safeguarded from every cultural every cultural uh, invasion, whatever it may be, whether it's the culture of the new country or the one you're coming from. Father, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that culture invaders have no space in my family. I break the shackle. I break the hold of any cultural influence, of cultural uh, you know, lifestyle, whatever it may look like in this new country, where it may it may sound like a fancy thing to, to you know to 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 just be by myself and say it doesn't matter. I don't care what you're doing, Father. I declare that I will not allow that cultural influence to steal that which God has given to me. I lay hold of of my territory, the territory of my marriage. In the name of Jesus, I say no to invaders. I say no to invaders. In the name of Jesus, I want you to begin to declare. Because the Bible says, I will give you and your descendants this land that you are lying down on. I want you to declare and say, Lord, I lay hold. I lay hold and I lay claim to the territory of my children. The culture will not take my children away. Corruption will not take my children away. A new country, a new land will not take my children away. I stand in authority as a child of God. And I declare that the land will not swallow my children. I say no and I push back against every onslaught of the enemy over my children. I want you to begin to declare the same for all of your sisters that are here in this community and say, Lord, as women standing together in prayer, we push back against every onslaught of the enemy over our children. And we say these ones will not be lost. We stand in agreement and we intercede and stand in the gap on behalf of every child represented in this community. And we declare that no child will be lost to the enemy. We say our children will not be lost to the culture, whatever the culture that is prevalent, every evil culture. They will not be lost to corruption. They will not be lost to the enemy in the name of Jesus. You know, this prayer that we are praying is such a big deal. Because one of my one one of the um one someone that I know very 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 well was speaking to me you know in in a training session she was telling telling me that you know some of the things that God has has, has told her to do and we're doing some 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 sort of mentoring session and she was telling me that do I know that back in Nigeria she wasn't working with families she didn't she that was not what she was doing and then she came here and God showed her gave her a vision and the vision was that. In, in in that vision she saw, you know how it is that you go to the airport, people are coming into a new country. And as they are coming in, you know, people are standing outside at the airport, welcoming them, oh, welcome to in Canada, welcome to Canada. So there was a crowd there saying, welcome to Canada, welcome to Canada. And as the people were coming in, uh, you know, some of them, uh, you know, you come in, into a new country, you have your trolley, you have your family with you, people are happy, everybody's excited to be able to come into a new country. And as they were coming in, the people that were telling them, welcome to Canada, will say, welcome. And they will collect one child from each family that was coming in. They were collecting one child from each of those families. And as she was speaking to me, <laughs> the Holy Spirit, I mean, it was, she was doing a, a form of mentorship where we're trying to help her put structure into the vision that God has given to her, right? So I knew that, you know, this person is running a ministry, running a nonprofit, and we want to put structure so that she can do the work well. When she was saying, I said, ha, this one that you have said to me. I mean, I know that God has put a vision in my heart. He's put a fire burning within me. He's told me that some things about the country we're living and how we should take authority. But you are specific in this vision. God has shown it to you so that you can arise and, and fill a gap that, that is there, right? But for those of us that are listening to that conversation, who have heard that the land wants to take your children away, what's our responsibility? To say no to the enemy. To not allow anything, whether it is busyness, <laughs> whether it is under the guise of, oh, there are bills to pay. So therefore, we are very busy people. Whatever it is that the enemy wants to use, the lifestyle that we're pursuing, that is not allowing us to be able to take authority and lay our foot down when it comes to our children. I want you to know that this thing is real. 
For God to show somebody this vision, it means it is happening and we've seen it. The enemy wants to collect that which belongs to you. He will give you in exchange for, oh, this uh, comfort of a new country, collect some things from you. But that is not the will of God for our lives. So when we are declaring, I want you to declare with understanding. When we say we are laying claim to our territory, to say no, the enemy will not take that which belongs to me. In the name of Jesus, whether it's my marriage or my children, whether it's my work, my career, business, whatever it is, the enemy cannot take that which belongs to me. I want us to pray and say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I lay claim to the territory of my ministry. Some of us came into a new country with fire. You know, we, you had this big dream. When I come, God has given me a, an opportunity to have a global stage. And then you come into a new country. What happens? Your fire starts to go down. Whether it's back, be, um, through con because of the comforts, you, you form into complacency because of, 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 uh, of um, hardship or the abuse to pay. So you are too busy. Whatever it is that wants to steal your, steal your fire, that wants to steal your thunder, that wants to steal the fire of God on the inside of you. I want you to say, no, Reba, Katia Kusa, every dream, every vision that the Lord has put in your spirit. I want you to say from this moment, I take back my dream. I take back my vision. The ministry that God has placed on the inside of me, nothing will steal it away. I lay claim, I save God. Nothing will steal my thunder. Nothing Nothing will steal my fire. Nothing will steal my passion. In the name of Jesus, because the enemy is there. Certainly wants to steal your passion. He's there, lurking around, trying to find a way to, that, that would cut Cut the vision of God in your life short. We declare in the name of Jesus Christ that we lay claim, we lay claim to the territory of ministry that God has given to us. The calling of God upon your life will not go down the drain because you move to a new country. Your fire will not burn out. You will not fall into complacency. You will not fall into a false sense of comfort. I begin to call us the daughters of of Zion, arise, arise into the place that God has called you into. Arise and step forward, step out, because you're not here just to eat and drink. You're not here just to build houses. You're not here just to buy lovely cars. To say, yes, now I'm earning six figures or seven figures. That's not why you're here. God brought you here for a reason. I want you to say, Lord, the enemy will not steal my fire. I begin to take back. There is a restoration of dreams. There's a restoration of vision of fire. God gives gives you the grace to step into clarity. The enemy will not steal your vision in the name of Jesus Christ. Hmm. I'm not so pray. Some of us came with expectations, and when you come to a new country and things are not quite looking like what you thought it would look like, you'll be like, My life was even, I was I not doing better before I moved here. Why is, why is, why are things happening like this? I can't seem to be able to, to make ends meet. It's bills upon bills upon bills. I can't seem to break through to the other side. I want you to pray and say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I lay claim to the territory that is my career, my business, my work, and I speak forth prosperity over my family. I speak forth prosperity in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak forth the covenant of prosperity, the covenant of, of abundance, the covenant of increase over myself, over my family, in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything that wants to that wants to hold me down, prevent me from ascending and becoming all that God has called me to be. I declare in the spirit that I will rise. I will rise. I'm prosperous. I live in abundance. The enemy cannot steal that which God has given unto me in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible says here in Genesis 28 that we read, it says that God told Jacob that, oh, you know, the land of, of, they are lying down is for you. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth. You will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I will be with you, watch over you, keep you safe. And all of these covenants, by the way, I shared that playlist last week. I hope we... We are able to access the playlist and we, we pray the prayers because it breaks it down more that for each of these things, that blessing that God gave to Jacob, right? God gave him this promise, but what happened? He went to his uncle. His uncle was cheating him, deceiving him, taking what belonged to him. It took him years to break the yoke of the enemy over him, right? And the Bible tells us something very profound that even though the enemy 
wanted to, to, to subjugate and hold him down and say, you will not prosper in this land. But the Bible says that God gave Jacob a strategy to be able to lay claim to what belonged to him. And then the Bible says at the end of Genesis chapter 30, if you read the last verse in that scripture, it says, and in this way, meaning in the way that God gave him a strategy to take some of the cattle for himself. In this way, the man grew exceedingly prosperous and came to own large flocks and female and male servants and came and camels and donkeys. I want you to pray and say, Father, nothing will hold me down. I will not be, I will not be held down by what people say, oh, in this land, ah, that's how it is. We just manage. No, that will not be me. People are prospering in this land. I can assure you. I can assure you. I can tell you for free. In case you didn't know, people are prospering, prosperous in the land. I want you to say, Lord, open my eyes to see. Open my eyes to see the strategy, the opportunities that you have laid out for me to step into. I will not be caught up in what people are saying, in what people are saying around me. I say I live in prosperity. I live in abundance. I say I in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I declare that I will stand prosperous in this land. Nothing will hold me down. Nothing will, will hold me down. I lay claim to the territory that God has given to me. And I declare that in the name of Jesus Christ, nothing will hold me down. I, I stand prosperous. I live in abundance, in increase. I'm breaking out to the left and to the right. In the name of Jesus Christ, nothing will hold me down. I will I'll not allow myself to be, to be caught up in, in what people are saying saying around me, but I choose to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, opening my eyes to see, telling me the things to do, how to position myself in a new country for increase, for abundance, in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in verse 14 of the scripture that we read in Genesis 28, he says, you will be, you and your family, and through you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. <laughs> if you, you can't be, you cannot bless other people if you yourself are not yet blessed, right? So automatically, it means that you are blessed so that you can be a blessing. Can you please mute your mic so that we don't, yeah, but there's no feedback. You know, it says you are a blessing. You are blessed to be a blessing. That's what it is. And I want us to pray and say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the, the reason why you brought me here so that I can be a blessing to other people. I want to step into that reason. I want to step into that purpose. I don't want to just stay here to eat bread, to drink water, to buy a car, to build a house. No, no, no. Lord, I lay claim to this promise that I will be a blessing unto other people. Somebody must smile because of my life. Somebody must smile because of my life. I was sharing with the ladies, uh, you know, in, in our UK, um, the ladies in, in UK, in the UK community, uh, just yesterday, when it was their own morning for prayer, and I was saying, I'm just using my life as an example as a testimony that when the Bible says you will, you'll, be, you'll be a blessing to other people, I, that people that I do not know from anywhere, that because I said, okay, Lord, this is my obedience. You do, do, with, we, do with it what you want. Yes, just yesterday, when I was talking to one of our team members. We're just looking through a few things. And we're like, oh, you know, um, we're looking through some of our resources and saying, okay, which ones do we want to, to make sure that we push out more because of impacts, how many people that reach and all that. And we open one platform. And we see 82,000 people have been blessed, have been enriched by that resource. And I just looked and I said, huh? I don't know these people from anywhere. There are people across the world. I don't know them. They don't know me. <laughs> they, just, they just access a resource that we have. 82,000 people have accessed that resource. And I was saying, God, this is what it means to be, to be a blessing to other people. That through me, Nations will be blessed. Through me, impact will be made. That's my desire in life. That somebody goes to bed saying, thank you for this person that they don't know. I'm a stranger to them. They don't know me. But God can bless other people through your obedience. I want you to pray and say, Lord, I don't want my life to just be wasted. I don't want my life to just be about food and drink. The reason you brought me to this land, the person that you want my life to touch, the global reach that you want my life to have, Father, from this moment, I begin to command those things. Whatever I need to do, I say yes to you. 
I say yes to you. I lay my life down again and again and again and again in obedience to you. Whatever sacrifices I need to make, it is nothing compared to, the, to, to, to knowing that I am right in the center of your will and your purpose for my life. Lord, I lay my life down again. I say my life will be a blessing. I say my life will touch somebody's life. In the name of Jesus, I will not just be about bread and butter. Lord, take my obedience and use me for your glory. Use me for your glory in this country that you have placed me in. Lord, use me for your glory. Open my eyes to see the things that I need to pay attention to so that I can be a blessing. My life can be a conduit of blessing to other people. I don't want my life to be just about me, but I say my life is a blessing to other people. My life is a blessing to other people. My life is a testimony to other people in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, we come before you again today and I pray for all of my sisters that are here and the ones that are in this community. And I declare over them, that all of us will arise and take our position. We will arise and take our place in the grand scheme of things when it comes to your kingdom agenda. We will not be about food, drink, water, what we can eat and what we can wear. But Lord, we will trust you even with our lives and with our very, with our very existence. We say, Lord, today we arise as women of God in prayer and we declare in the name of Jesus Christ that we will no longer be complacent. We will no longer be at ease in Zion. We rise together and we say, Lord, help us to take our place so that through us, lives will be transformed. Through us, lives will be changed. Through our lives, through our existence, people's lives will be touched in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. Because from this moment, we, we no longer shy away from laying claim to our territory that you have given unto us. We lay, we lay claim to our territories in the spirit. And we say no to the enemy invading our territory. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, ladies, for coming to pray today. Um, thank you for investing time in prayer together. And so next week, Wednesday, we're having our revival boot camp. It's a 24-hour prayer boot camp uh, for all of the people in our community, our global community. And so because of that, we will not be hosting uh, the, this early morning prayers because we're going to all be doing the river prayers 24 hour prayer watch every hour we will come together for 15 to 20 minutes we will pray together in our community in our river boot camp community that right um right there in this um one of our communities in this group i want us to just you know trust god that he will meet with us we're going to be praying for our children for the 24 hour prayer watch um so please make yourself available to join that next week so we won't be coming together to pray at this time next week, Wednesday. But of course, our back to school prayers are still ongoing every day. It's 10 p.m. Mountain Time. Um, you know, depends on, on which on where you live, where time zone is. But it's 10 p.m. Mountain Time. We're praying every day for our children throughout the month of August for back to school. And of course, in the fall, we are hosting our marriage and parenting courses. If you want to be a part of it, please use the links that we put in the group in the past. UniversityHQ.com to sign up for the fall semester. God bless you. And I will see you again. For those that are in back to school prayer, I will see you later today. By God's grace, have a beautiful day. And God bless you. Thank you so much for coming to pray. Bye-bye. Take care, everybody.